We'll bring in Brooklyn City Councilman Jamani Williams, who says he's been personally affected by this policy. We did ask for a representative from the mayor's office uh, to join us in this discussion, uh, but they declined. Councilman, thanks for joining us. You were walking around at a parade in Brooklyn in 2011. Explain what happened next. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Um, as you mentioned, uh, myself and Kiss and John Ford, he was an aide uh, to public advocate Bill DeBazio, were trying to go into uh, an event we were invited to and found ourselves handcuffed and arrested. Uh, primarily, we believe, because of how we looked and people didn't believe we were who we said we were. And I'm also not surprised that the mayor uh, and no one uh, decided to decline to speak because they can't back up their numbers. So they play fuzzy math when it comes to numbers and like to pretend uh, in large chunks that they've done things. But what they don't tell you is the largest decline in that murder rate happened even before the mayor came into office. And if you look at their own CompStat numbers, there is absolutely no correlation at all between the increased number of stops, uh, more guns on the street, less shootings, period. But so what do you attribute the fact that there has been this notable drop in murder and serious crime since the 90s? You, you think that stop and frisk is not the reason for it, uh, then, then what is? Well, we know it's not the reason for it. That's one. And two, we know that the way they've been doing it, not the stop and frisk, but the profiling is unconstitutional. The largest drop happened between 90 and 98 when we had the least amount of stops. And then again, right before the mayor came into office and in, in 2003, where there was 160 some odd stops, there were 597 murders. Uh, but in, uh, in other years, uh, 2006, that murder rate went up and such and so forth. And if you look at these numbers, Really, you'll see there are years where we had less stops and we had also less shootings. If you look at the past six months where everything is down, murder rate, shootings, and stops, but we attribute it to good police work like Operation Crew Cut, like Impact Zones, to good community work like Man Up Inc., YSOS, uh, that are doing violence interruptions, and community involvement and funding going to places that we need. I co-chair the Gun Violence Task Force on the City Council. We've infused some of these higher crime areas with resources. And those things together have been doing uh, what the mayor is trying to claim has been done with stop and frisk. And every time you ask them to show you the numbers, they can't. And they play fuzzy math with people who can't talk back. Councilman, we only have a little bit of time, so just very, very briefly, one explanation I read as to why this policy works is because you have individuals in high crime areas which for a whole bunch of socioeconomic reasons we don't have to get into right now, uh, are often uh, minority neighborhoods. Uh, and when you are stopping and frisking people uh, all the time who look suspicious, uh, people who would carry guns tend to not carry them anymore. And I've heard anecdotally the police say that some of these guns uh, for gangs and, and other groups, uh, they have community areas where they stash these guns, but they're not walking around with guns. Uh, hence, the crime rate, the shooting rate has been reduced. You're saying that's just not true? It's, it's just false. Uh, one, again, the murder rate was slashed long before the mayor uh, came into office. And two, uh, if you look at their own stats, only 16% of people have been stopped for um, descriptions. And if you can pretend that the, violating the Constitution was okay, you can look at there are areas in the city that are not high crime areas. And still in those areas, they're still stopping black and Hispanics. And lastly, you have in many years were more likely to get a gun or a weapon off of someone who was white who was stopped and still they decided to stop more on black Latinos. All right, no so matter how you slice this up it doesn't work and unfortunately we have an arrogant mayor that instead of coming to the table now has a federal monitor now has a community safety act on the New York City Council. We've got to wrap it up there sir. Except there's a problem. We have so to wrap it up. You. City Councilman Jamani Williams thank you.